Hey guys, today I have a really fun project for you. We're gonna be making this animation in Apple Motion. It's a combination of live action video and stills, and it's this really fun, colorful, juicy look that I'm really excited to show you today. This video was inspired by one of my main channel videos where I try viral video production hacks and see if they actually work. This particular hack is from this TikToker, and yeah, it does work on my main channel. I didn't get into the nitty gritty about how I made this magic in Apple Motion. I'm saving that for you guys. Let's just dive right into it. And I'm gonna show you how I recreated this look. So the first thing I did was shoot this energy drink on a turntable over a white background in our studio. And then just like the video hack instructed, I cut up some strawberries and stuck them to a knife and placed them around my can as I rolled. In the TikTok video, he instructed that you should leave the product in the shot while you do this part, but that didn't really make sense to me. So for good measure, I added in more strawberries without the can. The idea is that you have the same lighting for your fruit as you do for your product. The next thing I did was take all of that B-roll and bring it into Final Cut and exported still images where I had the strawberries in the frame. We're gonna be using those later. All right, I'm going to head into Apple Motion and drop that video clip into my project. I'm gonna shrink it down. I shot the video in 4K, but we're gonna edit this in 1080. Now what I'd like to do is queue up my clip to the part of the rotation that I like. So I think I wanna pick it up from right about here where the nutritional facts are just starting to go away right before it turns to the front of the can. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some color correction to this. So let's head on up to filters at the top of our screen. We're gonna go down to color and let's hit those color wheels. And I'm just going to up the contrast on this can to really make it pop. So that color looks great to me. I actually want this to rotate a little bit faster, so let's play with the speed. So let's head on over to the Properties tab in our Inspector window, go down to Timing and hit Show, and let's increase the speed dramatically. Let's go 400%. Okay, and now I need to cut out this rotating can from the background. We're gonna be doing that with a mask. Now, if you're smarter than I am, you won't have the problem that I'm about to have, which is, here's the can. When I bought this, I didn't notice the bottom was a little bit dinged up. And you can actually see in my video here that the can sort of sits at an angle. Do you see how it looks like really crooked? This is gonna make this a huge pain in the butt for me. Normally, if you really just had it straight in the center of your turntable, theoretically, you could just use a rectangle mask. I'm going to have to do some keyframing along the way here to make sure that our mask stays on the can. Also, you could motion track this, but because the can is spinning, there's really nothing for the motion tracker to grab onto with this can because whatever I attach it to eventually rotates out of frame. I've tried this, keyframing is the only way I'm gonna be able to do it. So I'm gonna start by queuing up my play hit to the very beginning of my timeline. Let's grab the rectangle mask in the center of the screen and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle around my can. And then I'm going to run my playhead down the timeline and we can see that that mask is drifting, right? So what we need to do to make those keyframes is to head on over to the inspector, go to the mask tab, and let's hit this button here, convert to points, and let's say yes, convert. So now I've got four points in my mask. You can see them here, one, two, three, and four. And so I'm going to create a keyframe here on control points. And then I'm going to run my playhead down the timeline a little bit to where we start getting a little wonky and out of frame and let's move our points as necessary. And a little more down the timeline. Yep, we're way out of frame there. And move our points again. All right, more or less we've got it. This animation's pretty short anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about keyframing anymore. Now we've got a five second clip. Let's again select that rectangle mask in the project pane, and let's just do a little fine tuning with this mask. I'm gonna give it the tiniest feather just to give us some breathing room, but we don't want too much feather because the strawberries are gonna come from behind the can 
and we don't want those edges to look soft. All right, now we're gonna add in a background. It's gonna be a white background once again. Let's head on over to library and select the color solid. I'm gonna drop it in my project pane and lift that can above the color solid in my project pane. Let's select the color solid, head on over to inspector, grab the eyedropper and let's just pick white from our frame. Now you can see here that, you know, obviously the, the color pick is perfect up here where I chose from. Down here, it's a little off. So this, what you're seeing over here on the right is the color solid and this brighter white is actually part of the live action video. Let's go back to the rectangle mask and just do a little fine tuning. The bottom of the can is a little messy looking down here, but that's okay. I'm actually gonna end up cropping this out in the end anyway, so we're not going to worry about that. Now what we need to do is section out the strawberries from the still images we exported out of Final Cut. Now, in my main channel video, I used Photoshop to do that, but I heard you guys, you want me to use Pixelmator Pro, that's how we're gonna do it today. So I'm going to select a project that's 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to select all of these strawberry images and I'm going to drop them into our project. All right, so let's start with this first image here. And because there's two strawberries in this image, I'm going to duplicate the layer because these are gonna be two separate layers. Now I'm gonna head on over to the quick selection tool and I'm going to select this strawberry. I'm going to hit select and mask and we're just gonna fine tune these mask properties here so we don't see any green bleeding from the knife on our strawberries after we cut them out. I'm going to hit apply at the very bottom of the screen and then I'm going to right click it here in my layers pane and select add mask. Now let me hide the rest of these layers so you can see what we got. So we just have one cut out strawberry. That's exactly what I want. And I'm just gonna to continue to do this for the rest of these strawberries. Remember, however many strawberries you have in your picture, you're gonna to wanna to create separate layers for them, so you probably wanna duplicate. Okay, so I've got all my strawberries cut out. Now I need to bring these into motion. So to do that, I'm gonna head up to File and Export. Now, I could export this as a motion project. However, I already have a motion project going, right? So what I'm going to select is Photoshop document and I'm going to make sure this is checked. Optimize for Final Cut Pro and let's hit Export. And I'm going to bring in this PSD file into motion. I'm going to drag it in my project pane, hover until I get this little pop-up menu and it's gonna say import all layers. So now I've got all of my strawberries here in my project. You can see them all, and they're all individual layers, all grouped together in one group called strawberries. The first thing I wanna do is color correct this to make it match the can. So I'm going to select the entire group. This is gonna affect all of our strawberries. Head on up to filters. We're going to go to color and apply those color wheels again and I'm just gonna drop down the shadows and increase like the global saturation a little bit. Okay, that looks good to me. Now I wanna make this project three-dimensional. We're gonna be working in 3D with this project. So we're gonna head up to the top center of the screen, add object, camera, and it's gonna ask me, yeah, do you wanna make this 3D? And I sure do. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is bring my can forward in Z space. I want it to come in front of all of these strawberries. So I just wanna show you something here. Let's select our can down here in our project pane. If I push it forward on the Z position, it is coming forward in Z, but it's not passing our strawberries in Z space. We need to switch this strawberry group from 3D to 2D. So to do that, we can either select it in our project pane head on over to group and hit this drop down to make it 2D, or we can just hit this little layers icon in our project pane, and did you see what happened? Our can jumped in front of our strawberries. 
So now let's play with the position of each of these strawberries in terms of the X, Y, and Z values and the rotation. So I'm gonna select this first strawberry here, head on over to properties. I'm queued up to the very beginning of my timeline. We're gonna make a keyframe on the position line all the way at the top to make keyframes for the X, Y, and Z values. And then we're gonna jump down to rotation to the Z value. And I am going to move that strawberry behind this can. We're gonna bring it way back in Z space. And we're going to go strawberry to strawberry, making those keyframes and bringing them back in the Z position, maybe adding a little rotation to them, each one one at a time until they're all hidden behind our can. All right, now we're gonna head back over to our timeline and jump 12 frames. And we're gonna start again at the top of our strawberries group. We wanna reposition each strawberry again with a dramatic move. We want them to go really far, but still in our frame. So I'm just going to move it manually to create that keyframe. I'm going to bring it way forward in the Z position, and we're gonna add a little rotation as well. Now we're going to do this whole thing one more time, but we're going to run our playhead way down the timeline, all the way to the end of our clip here. And this time we're going to move the strawberries in a less dramatic fashion. So they're gonna pop out over 12 frames and then just kind of drift as if they're in space. You wanna make sure in this part that the strawberries are moving in the same trajectory that they were originally moving. Guys, while I'm moving these strawberries again, if you're enjoying this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. So here's what we've got so far. It looks pretty good. I'm going to make some adjustments to this can. I'm going to select it here in my project pane and I'm going to rotate this can on the Z position. So it's at a bit of an angle and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit on the Y as well. Now let's draw our attention to the camera we added. Cue up my playhead to the very beginning of that timeline. Let's make sure we're selected on the camera in our project pane and let's make a keyframe here on scale. And I'm going to reduce the scale at the very beginning of this timeline to 62, that looks pretty good to me. Now let's jump to the 12 frame mark and let's change that scale value to a bigger number, let's say 76. And then let's jump to that five second mark here and let's raise this number even a little more. So here we go, that looks really good to me, but to really sell this look, I'm going to add a couple of extra strawberries tumbling in front of the can, really give it some depth. So what I want to do here is cute my playhead to where my strawberries are really in frame and I wanna select like my favorite looking strawberries. I think I like this one here, which one is that? Yeah, that's the one I like. I'm going to duplicate it and then I'm going to drag that duplicate all the way above my strawberry group. And let's pick one more strawberry, maybe one of these backside strawberries. Again, duplicate, bring it up here. Now for both of these, I'm gonna select both of them in my project pane, head on over to properties, and we are going to reset the parameters on both of them. We wanna start fresh with these two strawberries. So let's pick the first one, and I wanna bring it way forward on the Z position. Now you'll notice it doesn't look as vibrant as the rest of my strawberries. That's because I had the color wheels filter on my strawberry group here, and we took this image out of the group. Don't worry, we're gonna fix that. And then let's take this strawberry as well and scale that way up on the Z. Let's select both of them and group them together. Now let's head down to our timeline here. See these color wheels? I'm going to copy 
them in our timeline by right clicking on that purple bar. Let's go into our project pane and paste. There we go. Now our strawberries look really juicy. Next, let's head down to our timeline. Let's take that group and bring it further down in our timeline. We want these strawberries to come in after this big burst. Let's hit about 20 frames in. I'm going to select this first strawberry and head on over to properties. We're gonna keyframe all the positions. And again, that Z rotation, I'm gonna start moving it out of frame. And then let's jump 20 frames here and bring it across our screen. All the while we want it to tumble. So I'm going to play with the Z rotation as well. Now let's draw attention to the other strawberry. Again, we're gonna add a keyframe on the position and rotation Z. I'm going to manually move this to the top right of my screen. And on this one, I'm going to move down 22 frames just so it's a little different. And this time I'm going to manually move it across the screen this way. And I'm going to add a bunch of rotation on it as well. And for our finishing touch, we're gonna to play a little bit with the depth of field on our camera. So I'm going to select the camera in my project pane. I wanna queue up my playhead to a point where I have both of those front strawberries in view and all my other strawberries and my can. Let's head on over to the inspector window, grab that camera tab. Let's hit the drop down for depth of field. And we're gonna play with these depth of field values really quick. But before we do that, there's one thing we have to do. We have to go up to the top right of Apple Motion on this render drop down. We need to select depth of field because we could make a whole bunch of adjustments here in the camera pane in the inspector window, but we won't be able to see them until we turn on depth of field. So we can play with these sliders here. Look what happens. My can is in focus. My back strawberries are in focus, but my front strawberries are nice and soft. It feels a little more realistic. Now my project duration I had set to 15. I actually just wanna make it five seconds. So to change that project duration, we're gonna hit this drop down, show project duration, and I'm just gonna type in a value of five seconds here. And so that is how long my exported clip will be. That is it, you guys. That is how you make a really interesting product shot. I had so much fun working on this. If you're interested in watching me do other video production hacks, I will link to those videos I have on my main channel below. Thank you so much for creating with me today. I will see you again.